like to thank everybody for watching the video. What I'm going to be talking about is linear hitting versus rotational hitting and how linear hitting can give you more power, more pop in the bat. <clears throat> Typically it's uh, taught the other way around that rotational hitting, uh, especially in the last say 20 years, has taken hold and people have many websites and videos and uh, the idea of rotational is better. But uh, through study of physics, what I found is that linear hitting actually does give you a, a slight advantage. <clears throat> the reason is is that, uh, or if you look at rotational hitting, what rotational hitting is is hips first hitting. In other words, the idea is to get in your stance, turn your hips, this brings your hand forward, and then you fire your hands uh, at the pitch. and, and uh, the idea is to get the larger muscle groups of your core and of your legs involved so that you can turn the bat quicker. <clears throat> Though this sounds uh, pretty good when you compare it to rotational hitting, the timing of the hips uh, fall in a different order. And uh, many people have taught that linear is, is hipless, like you just bring your bat down and, and hit straight down into the ball without any hip action at all. But what happens is the hips simply just come later. In other words, you're going to start your hands. That's what's called hand first hitting. When you get to your range of motion limit, then this foot has to turn for your bat to come square uh, with most pitches. So uh, again, it's simply starting your hands first. And then when you get to your range of motion limit, then you go with your hips. <coughs> Uh, the reason the linear hitting gives you more power is that it puts the hips into the phase in which you're using the bat as a lever. If you break down hitting into a non-lever phase, which is the start of your swing, notice your bat head is behind the knob of the bat, and you're not using the bat as a lever yet. You're just pulling a straight 30 ounces around your body. This is called the non-lever phase. And if I put my hips into the non-lever phase, or prior to the, the lever phase, then the, <clears throat> the energy that I'm, that I'm exerting is actually put into the swing at the wrong time. The lever phase begins when your hands start to open up, and instead of being zero degrees to the bat, they go to 45 and then to 90 degrees to the bat. It's at that point that you're using the bat as a lever, which gives you a uh, mechanical disadvantage, but it gives you a, an advantage as far as acceleration goes. <clears throat> and so putting your energy into the period and your hip into the period when the hand is going to unfold is you give yourself a superior mechanical advantage. What a lever does, is, or a third class lever like a bat, is you have a pivot point, you have your hands for energy, and then you have a resistance. And so it's called a third class lever because it has this setup. It's actually a mechanical disadvantage. In other words, the closer my hands are, or farther away they are from the resistance, and the closer they are to the pivot point, the harder it is for me to turn the bat. You notice that if I push the bat here, I'm just pushing a straight 30 ounces, but I have to push it a longer distance with my hand, which means less acceleration. If I bring my hand back to here, the arc of my hand is much smaller, about half what it is out here, but because it's a shorter time period, then the bat head is actually accelerating quicker. And if I bring my hands back here, the arc of my hands is very small. So my hands only travel about that far. The distance is shorter, but I'm accelerating this at a much faster rate. So I get a, a disadvantage in that it feels a 30 ounce bat feels like a five pound bat when I move my hand back and try to do it, but it doesn't increase the acceleration. Now in physics, acceleration is a squared principle. And the reason that matters is, is that uh, if I just went, say, 3 plus 3, that would be 6. But 3 squared would actually be 9. 
So by applying force in this stage, increasing acceleration a great deal, and that force being added and, and the force going into the baseball as a uh, squared principle, I greatly increase the force that I transfer into the baseball. So if I turn my hips and then just fire my hands, the only momentum that I, or the only acceleration I have is the initial momentum from turning and then what I can deliver with my hands. And my hands are much sm smaller and not near as strong as my hips and my, my core. By adding my hips and my core into this phase, when I have that mechanical advantage, I, I really do increase my power. Uh, I've seen as much as 20% more power on uh, just about every baseball hit. <coughs> And uh, I'll talk about that more uh, in the next segment, and uh, I'll give you some more physics and math, and uh, we'll get into this a little deeper.